What is up YouTube? So today I thought it would be fun to go over um, the anabolic diet. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is I basically watched Brendan Gage's video as well as a couple other people that I got inspired by, Exercise for Cheat Meals, Greg Doucette, I've seen many of his videos, Ethan Harold, you know, all these different people, Will Tennyson. After watching Brendan Gage's video in specific, I'll link definitely all their videos in the description. He made an absolutely fantastic review of the anabolic diet as a whole. For those of you who don't know, I used to be overweight. I used to be 30 pounds heavier than I am now. I was by no means obese, but I was definitely a little bit higher in body fat than I wanted to be. And the anabolic diet was one of the main things that helped me get to where I am now. So I might be a little biased, but I think to start off the video, I think we should define what the anabolic diet actually is because there's quite a bit to it. So I'm gonna let Brendan Gage and Exercise for Cheat Meals have their definition first. What is the anabolic diet? It is about three to five meals per day of about 20 to 50-ish grams of protein per meal while also being able to eat the things that you love, just a lower calorie version of it that is sustainable because you are still eating all the things that you love and not having to neglect anything. Pretty much there are no rules as long as you're meeting your calorie goal and protein goal every single day. There you have it. The diet is about eating a large volume of enjoyable foods while still hitting your calorie and protein goals. And notice how I'm saying while still hitting. The focus of this diet is satisfaction, both in terms of taste and fullness. The question isn't really what can I fuel myself with, it's what level of taste pleasure can I experience with these restrictions of calories and protein. So now you've seen it, you've heard it from them. My definition based on what they've said is anabolic diet is basically uh, the diet that takes foods that you love eating normally, you know, greasy, fatty, really high calorie foods like donuts, fried chicken, pizza, and you basically make a lower calorie alternative that oftentimes is higher in protein, higher in fiber, lower in fat and midway in the carbohydrates most of the time this is just in general and obviously lower in calorie because of that and more filling so i think we should get into the positives of the anabolic diet first and then we can get into the drawbacks and then we'll talk about the overall diet as a whole in the end the first positive is that the anabolic diet is inherently filling so it's filling because oftentimes the protein content of anabolic foods is higher than ones that you would just normally eat if you were just mindlessly eating what you like. Now, protein of the three macronutrients is the most filling because in the body it has the highest thermic effect of food. So when it's actually digesting in your stomach, you know, in other areas of your digestive system, it takes more calories to digest than say fat or carbohydrates. And also a lot of the time anabolic foods have more fiber. So insoluble and soluble fiber, when combined with other forms of macronutrients like protein, fat, and carbs, they actually slow down the digestion process and therefore keep you fuller for longer. And also compared to the other macronutrients, fats have nine calories per gram, protein is four, and carbohydrates have four. Fiber is only of two, so you can eat the same amount of grams of something with a lot of fiber and get a more volume out of it than if you were eating something with fat, like donuts. So it's a lot more filling and therefore will keep you fuller for longer, which will most in most cases make it so you don't overeat on something you don't want to because you're not hungry. So it's uh, that's the first main plus. The second plus is it takes protein completely out of the equation because you're getting so much protein in all of these anabolic foods, you don't even have to worry about not hitting your protein goal. Protein has a lot of a overemphasis in the fitness community. People think you need a lot more of it than you actually do. I mean, you really only need half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight. A gram's actually on the high side. I probably have that myself, but that's because I just like eating stuff with protein in it. You absolutely do not need a gram of protein per pound of body weight, but it is a good goal to adhere to. And most people, as Greg Doucette says, are not missing out on protein. I mean, it's pretty hard to eat too little protein in a day. If anything, it's just gonna help you be more full. So that's definitely a massive positive. 
Third plus is it tastes amazing. Anabolic foods most of the time are 80% as good as the real foods. Now that's obviously the rule that we go by. That's what Greg Doucette says. That's what most people agree with. If it tastes 80% as good as the real thing, you're gonna be able to stick to it. Now the reason that a lot of these anabolic foods taste so good is, you know, we're not scared of artificial sweeteners. We're not scared of uh, protein powders, anything like that. And by adding those things in, as well as other little tips and tricks that we have, like sugar-free maple syrup, we can make things taste a lot better. So even if you're eating low-calorie things and it should taste bad, what most people think low-calorie tastes bad is uh, it doesn't because of all the uh, things that you can do to make it taste a lot better. That's another massive plus, but I think that pretty much sums up all the positive things about the anabolic diet. And I think we should move on to a little bit of the drawbacks now. So the first big drawback of uh, the anabolic diet is a lot of people, basically what they're doing is they're taking the word anabolic and the ideas present in the anabolic diet and just taking it way to the extreme. So the anabolic diet, in my opinion, should take foods and lower them in calorie, up the protein a bit, but still make them healthy because vitamins, minerals, healthy fats, those are all still things that you absolutely need in your diet. And if you're never eating anything like that, again, because you only want to have the lower calorie alternative, you only want to eat PB2, you only want to eat chicken breast, you only want to eat um, non-fat Greek yogurt, you're going to be missing out on a lot of the vitamins and minerals that you need because a lot of the time when these things are made lower calorie, those are what are lost out on other than just the calories from fat and things, stuff. So. Peanut butter is an example. I have that all the time. Uh, it's incredibly rich in monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, uh, as well as some other vitamins and minerals that you absolutely need to survive. And when you take the PB2, which uh, obviously I also have all the time, but it doesn't have nearly the same health benefits as regular peanut butter or regular other nut butters. So a lot of people are taking it way to the extreme and they're thinking that just because it's high in protein and low in calorie, it's inherently healthy, which is not at all the case. Some people take it to the extreme and they forget of the other health benefits that high protein, high fiber, and low calorie does not inherently mean it's healthy. The second drawback is a lot of people think you have to eat anabolic all the time. Uh, now, the problem with this is that the diet is a lifestyle. You have to be able to stick to it for life, and nobody is gonna be able to stick to eating only the highest volume, highest fiber, highest protein things all the time. So what I find, and I used to do this as well, and Brendan Gage also said this in his video, is he felt like he needed to eat every single meal with the highest, val highest volume, lowest calorie. You know, he could never eat fat cheese again. He would always have to eat the low fat, always had to have PB2, always had to have protein ice cream every single meal and that just made him feel bloated, made him feel stuffed all the time. Now, the whole point of anabolic diet is to make you feel full after a meal and then hungry when you eat your next, but by no means should you be stuffed or starving. You should basically never be stuffed or starving. You should just be full and hungry because that is the absolute best feeling. When you get in that habit of after a meal, you feel satisfied, and then by the next one, you're hungry and happy to eat again and not starving, that is the golden place to be in, absolutely amazing. But a lot of these anabolic foods, they're so filling and so high protein and fiber that you end up feeling a lot more full. You feel just absolutely stuffed because the emphasis on volume is just put way too high. So that is another massive drawback of the anabolic diet. I think those are the major drawbacks and I think the positives definitely do outweigh the anabolic diet. So let's. Let's kind of like sum up the diet as a whole, what I think on it, how I use it now, and how I think you should use an anabolic diet. Now, at the end of the day, everyone is different. Everyone likes different things. So the anabolic diet, the fact that it, it's, it basically, it's so flexible because it lets you take every single food, every single food group, don't cut anything out, um, and choose what you like and make them lower calorie alternatives. If you don't like the low calorie wraps, don't have the low calorie wraps. If you don't like protein ice cream, don't have the protein ice cream. There's definitely some low calorie foods that you can find in the community, which is so big and so helpful that you can definitely enjoy and definitely find the stuff that you actually like that is part of the anabolic diet. 
Now, the way I use it now, because in my opinion, anabolic diet, if you just ate anabolic foods all the time, and you always and you took it to the extreme like some people do, you would not be getting the vitamins, minerals, and health benefits of all these high calorie things. So what I actually recommend is for a general, no one has to follow this by the way, this is just a recommendation, is you kind of do a split between normal high calorie meals, you know, going out with friends, having fun, eating what you want, and then you use the anabolic meals on the side to actually fill you up from the high calorie nature of these other meals which won't be as filling. So say if you knew you were gonna have a high calorie thing for dinner, you know, you're gonna have some fried chicken or something like that, and you're gonna be starving after you eat it because you know, you're not actually eating that much volume, maybe top it off with a protein ice cream or a massive wrap or a massive salad. And that way you're still sticking to your calorie goal, or you're not going that far over and you actually still get to feel full even though you're eating these higher calorie things. So it's all about balance. You know, if you eat half anabolic, half higher calorie, not only do you get to feel full and you still get to enjoy your diet pretty much all the time, I look forward to all my meals, but you also get to have those higher calorie things while not being hungry or starving like what you usually would be if you only had the higher calorie things. It's all about balance. So the anabolic diet is fantastic in my opinion but it's only good if you, if you take the principles and don't take them to the extreme. It's all about balance. So you have to remember, diet is something that you should be able to stick to for life. If you're not going for a competition in bodybuilding, you're just a normal guy who wants to do better in the gym, you should use the anabolic diet not as like a rigid diet plan that you can't, you can't do anything off of it. You always have to eat low calorie. You should not do that. You should use it to help you with your cravings, to help you with your hunger when you feel you need to. And uh, when you want to have some fun, enjoy yourself, go out with friends, have those higher calorie things and know that you can always fall back on those anabolic foods to fill you up after them. So I think Brendan Gage made a fantastic video. I really, really like the anabolic diet. It's, it's fantastic to a degree. Uh, I love Greg Doucette, I love Will Tennyson, I love Ethan Harold, I love all these YouTubers that do it. And I think the community around the anabolic diet is one of the best out of all the diets out there. So I think it's overall a fantastic diet if you take into the, the points that I was talking about and that Brandon was talking about. So that's pretty much the video. I, I hope you guys learned some stuff. Hope you had a great time watching. Uh, like and subscribe, it would really help me out. Um, maybe I'll do another video with my mom at some point, but I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.